What are we going to work on today? Let's see. So I think last time around, let me pull over. It was my accumulation of tabs of, of things <laughs> over, over all the different streams, looking stuff up and whatnot. There's the app as it is. Uh, last time around, we were working on this pull request, I think, for issue 79, 79 which was um, essentially being able to associate a series of videos uh, to a stream. So a series of episodes, um, a series of topics of streams, maybe, you know, wording. Um, then populate the series into the episodes when we're bulk creating the episodes from the stream, which is something that I've been working on actually, um, actually using the app and getting ready. Uh, probably after the stream today, I'll be going through and getting into DaVinci Resolve and uh, rendering out things. I'll probably do that overnight um, because I can't really, I mean, I can use this computer while that's going, but I can't really uh, like play games or anything while that's going. But anyway, so how th what that looks like though, right? So let me add my filter back. Say streams that don't have episodes, right? And so then, uh, what was the 315 stream? I don't know. It doesn't say. <laughs> it was a mystery. What what was it? And we don't have a thumbnail that works either. Um, do I have a transcript? All right. Talking about doing a poll. Um. Let's scroll down a little bit. Uh, so this must have been CK3. Yes, I can tell because we're talking about lowborn genius, <laughs> Scotland, kingdoms, princes. So that, that must be CK3. Um, it's like, here we go. So 324, Learning Elixir uh, was a stream that I did. So I could associate this to a series, right? I associate this to the the glowing telegram project. Uh, and if I go over to the timeline, well, hold on. Oh, we have, we have things. Okay. I just need to reset. There we go. Um, yeah. So it will auto select the periods in between the silences and there we go. And then, um, then I can create bulk create episodes. And that will create episodes from these, essentially the selected windows of time within the stream based on silence detection currently. Uh, and that will create episode records. And then the episode records themselves are also linked to the series and have a, an order index. And um, what I was working on the other day was pulling in the largest episode index for an episode already associated with the series, which is that 38 right there. Um, so that means there's some other record, probably day 13, episode three, that has a 38 on it. And so that's the, the thing that I needed in order to then be able to populate, like I need to be able to retrieve that number so that in the bulk episode creation on the, uh, on the previous screen, um, I can use that to then populate the order index for the new records. So that's the idea uh, with the poll request, right? Populate series into episodes and add next order index values. So that is what I think we're gonna work on first this morning. As soon as I find the thing that I dropped. Never mind. Okay. So how are we doing? This fine Sunday morning. Uh, for those, at least in the US, maybe a three day weekend or a four.
hope uh, well. I guess if you're watching this somehow later on YouTube, then this is not going to pertain to you unless you're watching this, you know, <laughs> a year in the future. Since this likely won't be on YouTube for a while, I got to catch up. Which is what the tool is supposed to help me do. Uh, break through the tedium of processing all of the stream recordings into episodes. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's let's. What have we done so far? Right. So I think in the last stream we moved these copy things in the Docker file for all, all of our Rust services down, um, which seems to have improved the uh, performance of uh, the build process quite a bit. I realized one of the past down migrations was uh, was incorrect. You can't drop the constraint on a column if it's already been dropped because you dropped the column that the <laughs> constraint is about. Uh, so I went back and fixed that and we added a, a new migration to add the series ID column to the streams table. Um, I, I think this was yesterday. I transformed the get list endpoint for the series record type. Um, so previously this was just using this macro that I had created at one point. Am I using this macro at all anymore? Is a question. Control shift F. One place in a video clip. Okay. Um, so, uh, but the reason for that is that the macro works. It, uh, it, it sets up a lot of things, but it doesn't provide the ability to uh, customize uh, filtering. And um, there was something else. So yeah, I needed some, uh, some custom SQL in here to get out the max order index. Maybe there's a way to express this in, in diesel, but um, yep, so that was yesterday. I had a fun thing where I realized that uh, <laughs> the types do matter, actually. If you, uh, if you say to Diesel that the type coming back is going to be a big int, but the column here is like a, it's, it's a, uh, it's an int or an int four or whatever it is. So it's, it's, you know, four bytes. Um, so the max of that is also that same type. Uh, we seem to get like a deserialization error kind of internally from diesel. If the type here doesn't match the type of the data coming back from the database. Um, so, yeah. You know, and then, yep. You know, so then adding max episode order index to the series simple view, which is being returned from, uh, the list endpoint. And then added series ID to filters for uh, listing streams, right? So being able to go to the streams and then add a filter based on series, right? So there's a little bit here. The recent streams I have been adding the series to. So I'll have to go back and add to the past streams as well if I want to have that metadata associated with it. Uh, had some redundant stuff here we got rid of during the last stream. Various things, various things. Oh yeah, in the episode list view. So back here, I changed the uh, the filter element from being a boolean uh, input to being a nullable boolean input. So the nullable gives you this drop down where you can select, hey, I don't care if it's published or not without having to remove the filter. Because I was getting some weird interaction 
um, if it if you don't use the if you use just the normal boolean input, you add the filter, the toggle will be off. Um, but it doesn't filter anything yet. If you have you have to toggle it on and then back off, and then it filters to only not published. So the blank here, there we go. So we get both, right? So this seems to work better in our case where I might be interested in, yes, it is published. No, it's not published. Or maybe I just don't care, but I don't want to have to get rid of the filter. Um, so yeah. And then uh, starting to go through and use memo from React, not to be confused with the hook use memo. Uh, and I think there was another case where, so doing some like performance improvement things. Um, you know, performance tuning of React apps is not something I've done a lot other than, um, you know, avoiding gotchas. But we have a, you know, a lot in, in this app, a couple of custom components that are um, uh, just like pure functional components and even things where we're using hooks and stuff. Um, this is just going to prevent us from unnecessary re-renders, theoretically. I I was I was sitting there with the uh, the React Dev Tools profiler and going through and looking at things that were taking time to re-render and looking at cutting down on some of that. Um, some of the bigger cost of performance. So as an example, like if I go back to stream back to my normal filter and then we go to hey this this one right here i select the series glowing telegram i save and then we kind of freeze for a bit um and it seems like this freeze has something to do with re-renders caused by uh emotion styling that material ui is using and and maybe there's just something i'm doing wrong or missed in the setup for the project but um i have kind of a side side project uh actually i think i pushed uh, the first set of changes to it and it's, it's a separate repo uh, repo uh and github called uh, studio succotash because i like randomly generated names And so I'm not gonna work on this today, but it is something that I want to pursue more. And uh, the README doesn't really describe it. It's just like the README you get from the, from the uh, Tailwind setup, whatever. Uh, but this is essentially going to be the start of a custom C uh, Tailwind CSS React admin setup, right? So um, replacing, um, this, is, this is less of like, this is not something that you would necessarily um, like. This is going to be essentially a freestanding app that you would copy and paste stuff from, not like a library, not like a framework, right? So the idea would be to have customized. I don't think I've checked in any components yet, but essentially showing how to, um, you know, make a React admin app that um, use Tailwind. So customized React admin UI elements. Um, and maybe that could become a library. Um, but I don't know that that really makes sense because the idea will be that you'll want to customize those elements. So it'll be more of that. Um, there are things out there, right, that are like, you don't, it's not a library, you don't import it, you don't uh, add it to your package JSON, you copy the components into your project. And that's kind of what I was thinking this, this is going to be. Um, assuming I find more time to work on that. Uh, but, but Tailwind's kind of interesting to me. It's not something I've really done anything with. This is kind of the, the first thing. Uh, so I'm learning it as I go and it's, it's kind of interesting. All right, so, um, I think that basically gets me back to where I was. We got some check annotations here that I could potentially address. 
right? So Twitch API at SoSeeMe.rs is not using common API lib, apparently. Interesting, interesting. So let's, um, is there a way? There we go. Just to like look at the workflow. Let's do this. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna open the project. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna create a uh, task on the project to address those annotations. Uh, is it called Clippy? this up a bit. I do want to do that sooner. Mm, let's try about here. Cool. All right. So Have some coffee. Um, well, <laughs> what's next? What's next to, to, to work on this, right? So uh, I think um, there should be a bulk episode creation button part of the stream. I guess it's in timeline view right now. Let's let's pull this over and let me also I realize I have a uh, since I was working on this, uh, working on this on my own the other day, I did change the, the uh, text size down. Let me switch that back up. Uh, so we have a bulk create episodes button. Does this? I might want to move this to a separate file. Especially if this doesn't really depend on anything else. Let's do that. And right now I just have kind of a flat um, component structure and I may revisit that as we as we get further along. Uh, so this is going to be a bulk episode create button dot tsx. Yoink. Post export default. There we go. Um, now data stream element is that something defined in here? No, it's that's coming from timeline stream timeline. Interesting. Let's um, let's move that. We're gonna we're just gonna do a little bit of refactoring ish. Uh, I say ish because. I don't have any unit tests, uh, and maybe I should, but this doesn't, so that's, that's what it is. Anyway, I wanted to move that type over there because it feels really awkward, right, to have two really unrelated components and one import stuff from the other. That, that doesn't feel good to me. Uh, let's see, let's try add all missing imports. Okay, that seemed to be good. Okay, except doesn't know where a used mutation comes from. I don't blame it. I don't know either. <laughs> Remove some unused things. I have a React query. I actually came across a kind of interesting video on YouTube the other day about kind of the, the why of React query. Um, there we go. this 
what's upset about. Oh yeah, now we need to import that from where it is. Nice, all right. Cool, so that is uh, a set of changes. Let's see what, did we get a nice commit message? Refactor extract. I mean, that that is a thing that is, is happening here, but that that's not really the thrust of what we're doing. But that, that's a good, that's a good one. Okay. All right, so we have the bulk create episode button. Is this actually where I wanna be? I think so, right? So um, the in the stream edit UI, you click this button and it runs this function which calls mutate and the mutate is the function that does <laughs> the mutation represented by calling data provider bulk create hmm. what's interesting here so we have uh, right, so record in this context is the stream. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna rename the symbol to be the stream record uh, because otherwise it's kind of confusing. Now, I'm gonna call it that. Of course, you could use this button on a different view, and then that record would be something else. But I think it's important to call it something other than just record. Because in the context of this, like we're, we're about to create, you know, records for each segment. Uh, so that'll be good. Um, so currently we're titling things based off of an index, right? So how many elements there are in here. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, um, but I might want to say, actually, this is gonna be stream record dot something plus index plus one. What's this music, it's very, it's a different vibe. Okay, so um, get list from the stream. Oh, right. Huh. Right, so the record is going to be the stream record. Specifically is going to be the record that comes back from get one, so a stream detail view. All right. Which does have the series ID. Do we, I guess, what this needs to do is actually get the, uh, the series. It needs to get the series that uh, is linked to the stream. Hmm. Right, because it's, well, there's a choice here, right? So the choice is I could either change stream de detail view to include the information that I want and just pull that every single time. Or I could have the front end pull the, the, the series record based on the series associated with the uh, that particular stream. Hmm. Now, 
Now, I could do that. I could add it to the struct and then change the code to retrieve it. That is extra work every single time when I may not actually need that versus when I actually need it, asking for information about the series. I think I'll go with trying to, uh, to fetch the series information in the front end here. Now, how do I do that? Um, are there, let me pull up the, uh, react admin docs. It's very bright. Okay. Um, so like we're using things like use mutation other data fetching things. Here we go. So use get one, use get many, use get many reference, update many, get list. What does use get many reference do? Queries the data provider for a list of records related to one another. All the comments that supports filtering, sorting and pagination. I guess what I want to do is I want to use use get one. get one several times. We're not right now, not explicitly, right? Because so, so that happens behind the scenes as part of populating the record from the record context. In fact, that's a question. Yeah, I am using use record context. Okay, cool. Um, all right, if we wanted to get many separate users. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fetch references, React Admin exposes a use reference hook, which avoids doing the array conversion manually. It's an appli application hook rather than a data provider hook, so it's syntax is a bit different. Prefer to use reference to use get many aggregate when you use, uh, use get one to fetch a reference, right? So, I mean, this is kind of literally what I was wanting to do, right? Where there's some related record based off of an ID from the record. So use reference, reference users ID is the ID. Yoink. Well, let's change the uh, things we're doing there. But the idea is going to be okay. So this is the the series. It's going to be is loading series. This is going to be error series. Okay, and then use reference we'll need to import. There we go. A reference is series, and record isn't record anymore, it's stream record. Uh, and this is series ID. Um, okay. So, well, we, we don't want to say, I don't think we, we just want the button to be disabled. probably don't need to handle error checking there because what we'll do is we'll do something like if error series we'll just show the error here 
Uh, are we not grabbing an error on the, oh, we're not. From the use mutation. And we could pretty this up, but I can't really be bothered. Why is error unknown? Ah, because that's probably, it's one of the types here. <laughs> T error is unknown. Um, versus an any. Let's just try dumping the contents. Yeah, that's not happy because we've, we've not finished the thought here. Uh, because this is the point where I realized that, wait a second. The thing that I'm not, the thing that I'm after is not in the stream record at all. It's in the series dot um, something series get one. Yeah. Um, and this is where an assumption that I was making before no longer holds, right? So before I was thinking, oh wait, 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 maybe, maybe. So what does use reference actually do? Does it use get many? Because if it does, I think it does. So I think it, it will be using the series get list that, that is going to get us the um, series simple view struct, there we go, which contains the max episode order index. Series is possibly undefined, it's true. Uh, so we're gonna have to do something a little bit more involved here. Make a proper function body. Uh, I don't need that comma there. Right. So what we're going to say is, okay, we're going to map over the segments. Um, I guess actually, no, no, I'm going to do this a different way. Like the logic here can live before we call bulk create. So we're not going to say it's going to be, it's not an error if there's not an associated series. We're going to say, um, base, uh, ep index is series that max episode order plus one um, except I know it's possibly undefined so this is where I wish we had I mean okay so we have a ternary right we can say okay if series then this otherwise zero probably just one we can do that It'd be, you know, in Rust, you something like, you know, if, if that, then, you know, and you can have an if that is also an expression. Um, what we can also do is we can say, um, something like this. Right? And then this just becomes this. So if we have a max episode order index value, or we have a series, um, yeah. So if we if we if we have if we don't have a series, right? Then this will be potentially this will be undefined. If we did have a series and the max episode order index was zero. In either of those cases, we would default to zero, and then we'd add one to it. Otherwise, we'd take whatever was in this and add one to it. And that would be the next episode index, uh, which is good because index for the first segment will be zero. So we'll just use that number. 
and then for the subsequent episodes from the from the stream it would be base plus one base plus two etc so i think that looks good to me um and then arrow here Const error is an empty object. That's funny because it says it's unknown here. What does it mean? Okay. So I guess for this to work, I'm just gonna say any. Yep. So I think this is gonna work. If if use reference did a get one um, in React Admin parlance, <laughs> in the in the kind of scheme that React Admin uses to express how it fetches data, that would get translated by the data provider into a call to the get one endpoint. So just getting a single record. But use reference seems to use this get many um, data access. Uh, method, which is going to call the get list endpoint, which is going to return the relevant information. Um, now, if it's loading or if it, there's an error, then the button will be disabled. I guess technically, it's. I don't know if it would be possible to have reached the body of this function by clicking on the button, and you have to be really quick. I guess there, it's not impossible. Maybe it's not impossible to like have clicked the button, but then also to like trigger a refresh of the data because there is a refresh button in the UI. Um, but at that point is loading should be true or is loading series should be true. But at that point you've already clicked the button. Let's just say Just out of a sense of, of maybe uh, <laughs> unnecessary caution, I'll just uh, return. Can we do that? Is that acceptable? Okay, I'm not getting a type error from just returning. Okay. Um, and we are populating the series ID from the stream record, right? Into the individual episode. We're already doing that. Um, but there is a piece missing here. So this is just adding it to the, the title, which can be helpful because I have started like, like especially for the glowing telegram, um, playlist and series on YouTube. I am just using the the stream, um, like the raw number, like <laughs> raw episode, you know, 50 something or whatever. Um, yeah, so just using that. Whereas in the past I have used, you know, day X, part one, part two, part three, that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm doing more of this. More coffee. Okay, so. Hmm. Right. So bulk create. What, what do you do? Uh, that's not helpful. Uh, we can look at the actual data provider. Uh, let's see. Data provider. So I have this bulk create. So we do um, a put to the resource type. 
in this case we were, were after episode create bulk I mean I could I could just look there um, if I wanted to trace it through at least right now that's all defined in main.rs what where the actual like the router is right so then I'd look for ep records episodes and then we have a put which hooks up to the create bulk Um, there we go, create bulk. Okay, and so this currently, it takes a bulk create episode request, which is just a, a vector of create episode requests, which then takes an order index. Okay, so I should be able to do this. Now, order index does not have to be unique. Like we can have duplicates um, even within like a series, what, ha what have you. So even if, you know, we don't have a series, this will just be like one, two, three. And that's not the worst thing. I can go back and, and update it. Um, But this should solve my issue of having to go and sort through things and update them manually. That's what I was doing yesterday as I was going through a couple of weeks of streams and creating episodes is that I would have to go back and, um, you know, at least I had already in the UI at that point in the drop down for series had the, the number of uh, like the, the latest index number. So I could just go, you know, one plus that manually and type that in but this will save me you know whole seconds of of typing uh so maybe this works let's uh let's give it a shot so in glowing telegram here's a stream it did successfully save i think to the series so it doesn't lock up forever so whatever is going on it seems like whatever's going on with the motion, which seems to be the source of the, like clicking the button. I'm not sure if it's that, or that's just an artifact of like re-rendering over and over again, it's hitting that, but something is forcing like a really type, like a tight, like bit of JavaScript to run. That's kind of just making everything hang. Um, but yeah, anyway. If I make some progress on uh, the other projects through Studio Succotash and convert this all to using Tailwind, I will probably just drop Material UI and uh, do my own custom stuff. Um, you know, the goal once I figure out like how to get all the pieces to work, right? We're in the we're still in the building all the pieces stage, right? But once I have all that, uh, the the kind of next big goal um, is somewhere in this list overall workflow right to have essentially a workflow like a custom UI workflow for stepping through and doing all this work without having to click to a bunch of places um, so less of an admin UI and more of a just like a uh, click a button, start a process, kind of like a wizard. There we go. To do this. Doing all of these things. But um, I wanted to really, one, I wanted something that I could use now. And I wanted to have kind of an admin tool so that I can go back and change things. I have a way without having to go into the database to administrate it. Okay, so we have the series on here. Uh, we got all the video clip information. We have the transcript. Uh, let's see. Um, this should be fine. I think this might have been a stream where I showed some secrets. 
uh, during the stream. Control F. Secret. This is not secret, I said, five minutes in. Uh, secret file name, client secret. I don't need the secret. <laughs> uh, talking about Fireship, apparently. Uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, it's not a permanent secret. Uh, uh, it's going to expire. I still don't want to leave that on stream. Uh, uh -huh. Oh yeah, probably leak might be a good word to search for. Um, but this is the sort of thing that I might be able to do in the future is have things for looking through tra the transcript of the stream for like, oh, hey, <laughs> you might want to edit this out or, hey, you know, calling attention to it, right? Uh, and then we have our silence detection information and then our timeline, which we saw this before. Uh, so let me refresh really quick to make sure I, I think I already did, but. Why did the music stop? All right, what? different song. There we go. Uh, so let's let me open the Dev Tools just so that we see what's going on. We'll start bulk episode creation. We called put two episodes. The request had some information in it. Fifty six, fifty seven, fifty eight. It had the series and stream IDs. It had titles. 56, 57, 58. We'll see if those are the right episode numbers here in a second. But that all looks good. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess we still have this issue with um, the dev tools in Firefox not handling the compressed response. It's weird. Episodes created, it said before I just missed it. So if we go over to episodes. Okay, so. The first thing I see is there's no series here and there's no order index. Now, the last one was 55, so 56, 57, 58 are correct. If you look at 56, that is starting from the beginning of the stream, so that's good. And 57, one hour in, and 58, two hours in so that all looks right um but apparently we're missing something in create bulk probably the part where we're taking the episodes <laughs> and actually like creating the record we're missing some stuff here um yeah i mean Diesel doesn't think so because those other fields are nullable or have defaults or something. Uh, but there we go. Series ID equals episode series ID. Order index is that. It's thinking. See, that is an option, but that's okay. Is that an option? That's okay. Uh, yeah, because these are nullable, right? Well, order index is not nullable. Um, unwrap or zero should be fine. Okay, seems fine. All right, let's rebuild. And yeah, while that's going, I guess I will delete these episodes and recreate them. Nope, I don't have a I don't have a bulk delete here. I guess I'll go into each one and delete. All right. And go back to the stream. Okay. And now this shows up again because it doesn't have episodes anymore. And we're, we're just waiting for the build process to complete. Oh. Okay. 
still faster though. I, uh, I did add a new thing to the backlog for the project uh, as well that I was thinking about and and in uh, you know thinking about the build process and stuff one of the things I did add was a uh, it's near the top try different options for speech to text transcription so I was looking at this the still whisper from hugging face so it says it's a distilled version of Whisper that is six times faster, 49% smaller, and performs with a 1% word error rate. Um, hmm, long form WER is slightly lower than large P3. But anyway, I was thinking about, you know, um, what I'm doing right now is just kind of using an out-of-the-box program that I'm running from the command line from a Rust service. And uh, I might try setting up a Python uh, little service that, that uses this stuff directly so I can feed in whatever model I want. Uh, and, and just thinking about the consequences of that in terms of like, well, you know, well, what, how's that going to change how this? And the, the, the funny thing is, of course, because, um, like, I wouldn't need a custom Docker file necessarily. Well, I need to, like, pip install stuff, I guess. That's fair. But that should be, like, that shouldn't change a lot. So, like, for the Python services, those should, like, rebuilding them <laughs> should be uh, very fast compared to the Rust ones. Uh, all right, so anyway, it's so a timeline. Um, we have everything all pre-created. I'm not sure why sometimes the uh, the timeline isn't populated. Maybe that's just like a what are things happening thing. So we'll, uh, we'll both create episodes again. And then we'll go over to episodes. And now we got 56, 57, 58, and they're tied to the series. What's really cool about this is that, um, you know, what I can do is I just click these and then I can click bulk export OTIO and then just dump out the OTIO files for import into DaVinci Resolve. Um, there's more stuff that, I, that I'll want to do, right? So if I go into episode 56, one of the things I want to do is I want to use uh, my chat dialogue thing here right so this is um, this is the prompt right I summarize the provided video transcript into a title and description of the video to optimize for finding this video on YouTube I also provide oh, I don't I don't word wrap here <laughs> uh, so that's part of the prompt my response is a well-formed JSON object that includes the things it should look like this um, and it mostly works I would say Hmm, maybe a third of the time it actually gives well-formed JSON. I think two thirds of the time <laughs> it gives JSON with maybe a problem in it that makes it not parsable. Uh, and then about half of the time I can give it a response because I get a chat thing here. Let's just start. Uh, I'll get a chat box down here once I get my first response um, where I can say fix this JSON and then it gives me well-formed JSON about half the time and I think about other the other half of the time what it will do instead is it will give me like markdown encoded JSON and I'll be like uh, three back ticks JSON <laughs> uh, or, or something else uh, so it's a bit hit or miss. And I think there are some strategies for addressing that. Um, like this is a, a thin wrapper around the OpenAI uh, API using GPT-4 Turbo. And I could have something where um, I'm either using like multiple contexts to like simulate agents 
or I could have my service um, like have an endpoint that expects the responses JSON and it validates that and it goes back and forth with the API. Um, th that's where we started getting into maybe this UI that is like foreground and uh, blocking and synchronous doesn't really work anymore where it needs to be more of like any synchronous background you know workflow that you check in on and I might need a different UI for that and of course we have to wait for opening AI API to respond I think if we get to this task today which I think we're we're basically there um, I think I could work on this but let's I think let's say the next thing is going to be to update the GPT 4.0 since that's out and available and see uh, what kind of response I get so I'm probably not even going to save this so we can come back to this and kind of compare uh, what I get this is taking kind of an unusually long amount of time though. I feel like I get responses sooner than this. All right, so um, here you can see part of what I give to the API is the transcript for this section of, uh, of the video, right? So this is like the first episode. So here's like timestamp. Here's all the things I said during the stream. And that's part of the information that I'm sending, right? So I have the, the kind of the system definition, and then I have uh, video context, right? So I need help summarizing video transcripts into a title and description. I was gonna list the keywords that are relevant. The tentative title of the video is Learning Elixir, Glowing Telegram Project Continues, episode 56, right? And it was recorded on the 24th of March. And then I don't have a base description. Uh, my Twitch channel is this. I think I'm also missing something in the prompt. I think I was experimenting with this where I was telling it that it should always include that link in the description. So I might have lost that. And I'm not sure why this is taking so long. Let's let's look at the Docker. Um, yeah, Twitch bot shouldn't be running because the current branch doesn't have that. And then we're looking for the AI API. There it is. That's zero CPU. It's not really doing anything. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, I think it's now nine o'clock here on the West Coast. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause right here, um, and go and stretch my legs. Maybe you want to do the same thing. I don't know, whatever you need to do. I'll be back in a few minutes and uh, we'll check in on this. I might look at the, the console in Docker while I'm off screen. And then um, maybe look at GPT-4.0 and figure out what we're gonna do for the next two hours. All right, BRB. Mm -hmm.